live stream and I'm just gonna wait for that confirmation that we're live from YouTube before we get started. Today's we're in excellent condition and we're good to go. So guys, welcome back to another episode of the Box Mining live stream where we take a look at what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. Well, while Bitcoin itself hasn't been moving that much this week, the altcoin space has been going like wildfire. We've been experiencing levels of euphorism as if it's like 2017 all over again. And there is so much going on in the altcoin space that we're going to touch and look upon today. But also one of the major topics I do want to discuss in this episode is overhyping. Because this is something that does really much happen in the crypto space. And one of the videos that did go viral over the weekend was related to Cardano. Cardano had a video, well, just a video featuring some Chinese scammers promoting Cardano. And we'll take a look at that video and explain what's going on, why these Chinese scammers are really targeting rich farmers like the whole thing, I'll explain why rich farmers are a thing in China and why these people are being scammed right now because they're really being kind of pushing these coins as if it's the next birth of Beiju Jesus or something. But at the same time, we here understand the risk. And I think that's the biggest difference between us. Obviously, with these videos that are going viral, um, the Cardano community already kind of distanced themselves from it and said, you know, that's, that's not what they're promoting. That's not what it's about. So it's very clear it's not targeting Cardano, but I'm just using this as a reference to tell you guys a little bit of what's going on. And let me, let me give you guys a sneak peek of that too, whilst to make things more clear. So uh, let's see if this works. So that was kind of these farmers here. You can see a picture of Charles Hoskinson there. <laughs> All these farmers. And I'll explain to you why these guys have a lot of money, why they're getting scammed, and a little bit about what's happening in China as well. We're going to also take a major look at the Chinese hype too. So yes, last episode I was talking about how China right now has a huge hype for cryptocurrencies, but what's trending in the Chinese scene and what they're talking about is very, very different from what we're talking about over here. And I'll just go over the article that I wrote on boxmining.com. I think it's very, very cool for us to at the very least discuss. Then we'll cover a lot of the cryptocurrency related news in this episode as well. And before we start, let me tell you a little bit about my podcast. I'm glad to announce that Bitcoin out of the box, which is my podcast featuring some of the latest news and developments in crypto is currently being announced and released this week. Now with this, you can listen to a lot of these interviews on the go, especially if you're in a car or if you're going out for a run, this is a great way to catch up with what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. Now with season three, I wanted to make this a lot more informative about how people's moods and attitudes affect this space. So for the first episode, we got Sash Kuptal from Altcoin Buzz. He's a founder and creator from Altcoin Buzz. And in the second episode, we got Elrond CEO Benamin, and he's talking about scaling and sharding in blockchains. I hope you guys can check it out. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, everything. And I hope you guys can check it out. All right. Thanks for your Go for that, guys. So we have lots going on in the podcast this week as well. I'm planning quite a few interviews for the podcast. Really excited for that. So make sure you keep it up. It is on Spotify and iTunes. I'll drop a link down below too. I think it's it should be on the link somewhere. If not, check out the anchor link. It has the it has the link for everything here. I do. I did notice, of course, just um, popping up on my screen right now that apparently um, this stream is lagging a little bit for some people. So tell tell me on the live chat if. The stream is lagging for you guys. I'm streaming 4K again, so you know, hopefully everything goes well. If not, then oops. Um, big shout outs to everyone on up on appearing online. We got across Canada, Angela Wang, Gnome Party, Wendell, Bitcoin and Crypt the Bitcoin and Crypto Podcast. That's Jeff. Welcome, Jeff. We got Bernard Marcarius. He said it was a little bit sick today, and he's still coming on the stream. So Massive kudos just to support this channel, man. I feel so happy, dude. Like, um, Bernard, thank you for coming up. So, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a really great. I mean, every Monday morning I come in, I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Do I have to do this? And then after the stream, I'm so pumped, so energetic because of you guys. And just really, really big thank you. And if you guys really want to support the stream as well, actually, in fact, do, do support. Click 
the like button down below. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It's it's a thing that YouTubers have to say all the day. Apparently, it's we're at the mercy of the YouTube algo. But yeah, support support the stream. Smash up that like button and big thank you for all the members as well of this channel who make this happen. So let's go straight and jump into what is happening on the cryptocurrency markets over here. Let's take a look at the gecko, the coin gecko. You know, something that I really get used to getting used to now is just looking at the 24 hour and a seven day change. And you can see immediately that 24 hours and even the past seven days, Bitcoin has not moved at all. It's It's been pretty darn stagnant. And you can see that literally for Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're carbon copies of each other. In fact, with Bitcoin Cash too and Litecoin, you can recognize that pattern everywhere. So recently we haven't really moved that much. In fact, the whole market is pretty much in terms of the big top cap crypto cryptocurrencies, they're pretty much at a standstill. And in many ways, this is something that's not expected by the TA guys. So TA, if, if you're looking at it, we were kind of worried about major movements, breakouts either way. But Bitcoin itself uh, has just came out and just said, you know what, kids, I'm just going to sit here and chill. So, I mean, in terms of the uh, charts we've drawn a long time ago, this is something that we've drawn around two weeks ago. And it's moving within this channel. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going to stay around here. I'm gonna stay around here. You know, I'm not really gonna break below this. There was fear. There's multiple points at which people were trying to cause fear to say, oh, look, if we do move be below the support here, and which we actually did, if we do move below the support, you can see these little spikes down too. So just dropping below 9,000, boom, drop below 9,000, scared you, scared you. <laughs> drop below 9,000 again, scared you again. If that was happening, then there was a potential it can drop to earlier supports of 7,000 or 6,000. That was a fear going forward. That was why everyone's like, oh, talk to people about the cliff. Bucks, you got to warn people about this cliff. It's coming, guys. Plus token is dumping. We got people coming into our Telegram just trying to cause as much fear as possible. Possibly, I don't know if there's malicious reasons behind it, but that was the case happening. And then, of course, we have the breakout people as well. So it's like we have the reverse, the breakout people. Oh my God, if it breaks above 9,600, it's going to bump. Right now, Bitcoin decided, you know what? None of that. Nope. 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 So it's just, it's just staying steady. And I think that's actually good. Um, it actually makes people kind of chill, calm down a bit, a little bit, reduce the amount of speculation. And overall, that the, the amount of leverage on Bitcoin, that's going down because activity, obviously, is going down. But that being said, of course, the altcoin space has exploded in the meantime. If you look at seven days, uh, VeChain took 75% for a top 20 coin, that is a huge amount. Even in the 20, past 24 hours, it's like crazy. Like these, these crazy, insane bursts of momentum here. And something I do want to say just on the note of VeChain, you know, I've been following this coin for such a long time. It's one of my portfolio coins in my huddle. And man, we, we've been through a lot. Um, you know, I'm not one of those guys who shout, oh my God, it's going like crazy. Everyone buy it. No, that's not me. But I just want to just relay some experience, man. Going through that period when there was a lot of fear and starting a doubt, especially caused potentially by certain members of community calling VeChain a scam and saying, oh my God, Box, why are you associated with that? And even just like holding through that time, understanding what they were doing is important. That was rough, man. That was a rough period of time. And it's good to see them getting some final recognitions finally. So I think that's that's good, especially when pe with people using price as an indicator of performance. That's always hard. Kusama is always also up there as well in top performers. I'll talk a little bit about Kusama as well because it's related to the China hype article that I'll talk about. So it is related to Polkadot and it's been really hyped up recently. Uh, and I explain to you why that that's happening. We got Kyber as a DeFi, Synthetix DeFi, Bancor DeFi, Thorchain DeFi, Loopring DeFi. Bytom, not DeFi, Elrond, smart contract platform we talked about, Cardano, smart contract platform, so Icon, smart contract. So yeah, DeFi, smart contract platforms, they're performing crazy amounts and they're they're kind of using that time. I think 
we're entering that new phase where because Bitcoin is not moving a lot, I've talked about this. The theory behind it is because Bitcoin isn't moving too much, the altcoins come out to play. That's when a lot of people, they're in the spirit of, especially if they had gains. I, I talked about this behavior too, where there could be very much a gambling side to it, you know, just bet on the biggest altcoin. A lot of people think that this is like, like if you're brave enough to dare altcoins. It's not about being brave. There's nothing brave about like a lot of the mentality going in. But I think it's always, what does rule out is if you just, gamble blindly it's it could lead to disastrous results and this is where you know why we have to say this is not financial advice because some people put their life savings on just one coin without having a balanced portfolio that doesn't make sense for me obviously my personal strategy has always been to have a portfolio that is hodl i don't touch and then if i ever feel the inclination to go and have degenerate gambling that is when I make that a very controlled amount and then, you know, then whatever, right? You, you go, you know, if it's just a few hundred bucks, you know, if you just treat it as a trip to a casino or something like that, that's the way to do it. But you must make sure your mentality is very clear and you never mix and match these two. And that's, that's my two cents going forward. Um, okay, so that's kind of the, ca the case right now. DeFi is extremely hot right now um, in this current space. Anything with the DeFi tag associated to it, people just flock to naturally. And this is where I kind of segue to what's happening in China because they're experiencing something very different. So uh, this is this really, this article that I wrote, um, it's on boxmining.com, I'll send it right here. Um, it really came up after talking to a few friends that are involved in the Chinese cryptocurrency investing scene. So they're deep into that scene. They, they're in multiple WeChat groups. WeChat is how people communicate. They don't use Telegram there because you have to cross the border. And then they, they show what was happening. And let me just show you that video again because China has a very different style. And very clearly, you know, with this, this, these farmers here, let me turn on the volume too. Oh, 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 那么在前头排第十的说明这个币是非常优质的一个币种 right, so th that's kind of the style People preaching um, People pushing very very aggressively Especially to communities that are loaded with money But don't have much knowledge of how to invest properly. And this is a very, very big problem in China. A lot of people don't realize this, but what's happening is that farmers, right? They have land and what does China need? The government needs a lot of land to develop new roads, to develop new cities, to develop new areas, and they need to buy it off the farmers. And this is why farmers are extremely rich. There's like a new class of nouveau rich elite farmers that got paid millions of dollars for little plots of land they have, but the government really wants. And this is why they're super, super rich. And you can see like they're minorly flexing with the nice cars. Look at how shiny those cars are, right? Look at sh how broken these roads are and look at how shiny those cars are. It's obviously super trying to flex. They, they wash that car like every few hours. They have like people to wash it for them. They have a lot of cash and they, they got it from the government. And this is also explains why malls in like Paris, like big high-end luxury malls, there's like flocks of Chinese people that are very rudely behaved. <laughs> they're Chinese farmers. They're just, they're there to flash their cash. They're there to, they're nouveau rich. They just got a lot of money. They want to buy that Gucci, LV, whatever brand, that is why. And even in the States and everywhere, you can see like, Every luxury mall is filled with rich farmers. And then there's also why they get educated in situations like this, where very people who are very smart, they decide, you know what, they'll either push something like plus token, so a scam, or push real tokens. They'll be brokers for them and make money on a side. Like say, for example, a farmer wants to buy a million dollars worth of X coin. They can make a 5 10% spread on the coin prices, they can try to price it up somehow, especially because it's extremely hard to obtain cryptocurrencies in China via the normal methods. I mean, remember exchanges are banned. Yeah, um, it, it's all peer to peer, peer to peer fees are high. And this is what's happening. So this is not targeting Cardano. I pretty much said that earlier. It's not targeting Cardano, but you can see the, the, the photo of Charles Hoskinson here. And you can see that almost 
And, and the Chinese, they, they really like to push this. They like to say this is the best thing in the world. It's made by this genius. Worship this guy. And this is what's happening with a lot of coins. So including Polkadot. So that's Gavin Wood. So Gavin Wood's picture will get posted plastered everywhere. You also have Kusama. Kusama is related to Polkadot. It's like the testing net for, um, for Polkadot. This is in many cases why it's rising. Um, it's not the sole reason. I mean, um, in a Cardano post, I, I posted this up on Twitter and there was arguments. Oh, you know, 600 har- uh, farmers can't do much. It's, it's, it's something that's happening to be aware of. I'm not, I'm not accusing that this is the only reason why a coin is successful. There's definitely a lot of reasons to what's why. And I think there's a lot being done in Polkadot, Cardano, Kusama as well. But this is what's happening in China. There is a huge, Currently, what I, I'm calling white fever. Sorry if I'm racist here, but it is the case. Um, people love Western faces right now in China. So Charles being one of them, Gavin Wood being one of them. There's there's this craze right now because what's happening was that the previous generation, the previous coins that were hot in China were all Chinese Chinese coins. And the issue with Chinese coins were that they're very susceptible to pump and dumps. So the Chinese have just kind of lost hope in Chinese coins. So what's hot right now is anything foreign and imported. And there was a point where there are agencies that source Western developers. So they go to the West, find developers that are Western, you know, Western names, Western faces, and then they film these people and make them CTOs of the project, even if they don't understand anything about <laughs> cryptocurrency or blockchain. It's just a face, right? A Western face. And we saw that with Plus Token as well. Like they, they hired various people to, to be the face of the project and then to show it. So that's kind of what's happening here. It's, it's a little bit crazy, but a little, super racist. I'm sorry if I'm racist here. I'm sorry if I've offended someone. We've got Nick Nick Okatankas is <laughs> super crazy. And then Crypto Morpheus says, you get a shiny car so you can say, how do you like that? Ugh. So yeah, it, it, it is what's happening absolutely uh, for sure in China. It's, it's definitely not the, not the best thing, but that's, that is what's happening. And I, I'm actually saying also here that um, under this article that um, in China, they're pushing more either NFT platforms or smart contract platforms, mainly because DeFi, so even in the West, even though in the West DeFi is a little, um, it's gaining a lot of momentum and heat, DeFi in China is not as hot as DeFi in the, the, um, in the West, because mainly because of DeForce hack, it was a recent hack on a DeFi contract, the whole contract was bled, all contracts, um, all funds were stolen, so that kind of left a sour taste in people's mouths. Then we also have the blockchain service network. I think this is in many ways why a lot of people are investing into blockchain right now. It's because last year, um, she himself, President Xi himself, literally came out to say, yo, blockchain, it's one of the biggest areas they <laughs> want to push. Not, not exactly in that way. He's not that informal, but he's talking about blockchain, Xi Kui Lian, being one of the biggest areas to for China to push forward. And this has led to the blockchain service network, which that's being built underway. And it's led to a lot of interest into just Cosmos as well, this interoperability, VeChain, enterprise usage, Polkadot. You know, maybe that's why also VeChain has gaining a lot of momentum as well, because China's like talking about that enterprise adoption, using this to solve various issues, right? She himself said, I, we want blockchain. We want blockchain to be one of the f- forefronts and focuses, blockchain, AI. This is where China needs to excel at. We need to solve these problems of the supply chain management. We need to solve issues there. And that's why VeChain right now is jumping in that perfect position right now for blockchain adoption in terms of dApps. The blockchain service network itself is not a blockchain, right? That doesn't have its own coin. That's not a blockchain. The blockchain service network is to combine all these various public private chains all together in this giant glue framework. It's like, it's like the earth that the infrastructure is built on almost. I think that's probably the best analogy for it, for it. Um, if you want to find out more about blockchain service network, obviously I have an article, um, on that on the BSN on my, on my website. So that's outline what's happening. It will also be updated with a, with a recent interview. So I did interview the top Chinese executive that was in charge of constructing the BSN. 
to find out what's going on. That's part of a conference that's coming up in Asia Blockchain Summit 2020. So I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show you that guy's video, that video on this channel, but I'll update the information, the, the, the research that was contained in there. So lastly, NFTs. This is actually quite interesting as well. So non-fungible tokens are super, super hot right now. The, the use case is in gaming, but also in intellectual property IPs. Holding IPs and potentially being able to give people back assets. This is not talked about at all in the Western space. Very, very interesting. But they're hyping that up right now. And it goes to show that even if it's the same project yet again, in the West, we talk a lot more about gaming, but in over in China, they talk a lot more about intellectual property IP. And then finally, of course, I was talking about Filecoin as well. So Filecoin is surprising, get a lot of attention over there. Reason being was because Filecoin was at the center of a lot of crazy activity. So um, there was a lot of hype about Filecoin um, in the past. I'm, uh, that's not the video I want to link. So Filecoin. if you search Filecoin, it was, very, it was heated very, very huge in... Uh, uh, in a Chinese space. So you can see a lot of Chinese videos already showing up for Filecoin. So there's a lot of bag holders for Filecoin in China. That's why, oh, this is kind of cool. This is like introducing some Filecoin craze, saying it's the next kind of web 3.0 and all that stuff. It's, um, there was one event that was super crazy in Hong Kong. Let me just see if I can find that for you guys. But it's all about the hype, right? Um, Falcon Hong Kong, Esau. Yeah, it was from from this this. Um, yeah, it's finding a hard time to find it, but yet again, it's it's about these promoters that really push Filecoin very hard. And because Filecoin is a 2017 project and all of a sudden it's launching now, they need to generate that hype. So that's why yet again, Filecoin got hyped for <laughs> in China. And in many senses, it reminds me of what happened with NEO, where NEO got super hyped up in the West being a Chinese project. I think it's there, there is this kind of natural human tendency to want something exotic, something that's mysterious and cool. And that's what Chinese are doing exactly the same thing. So they're liking all the Western projects, the more mysterious, the better, the, the, the you know, putting kind of, uh, these developers on a pedestal. We saw that with Da Hongfei, with Neo. Now we can see that with Charles Hoskinson and Card Cardano, and also um, Gavin Wood with Polkadot. It's, it's, I think it's almost human, um, these aspects. And it, it's, it's a part of a psychology where if you don't understand too much about a particular project, you tend to kind of gravitate towards the faces more. We like faces more than words, right? Um, this channel, obviously, I've been trying to do the exact opposite. I'm like, yo, look at the tech. You could look at the, the, the whole development team as a whole. Don't center on one person because that makes it super centralized. It defeats the whole purpose of it. But anyways, um, that's kind of what's happening in China. And, um, and just to relate to that too, um, and this also doesn't just happen in China. So we have the Philippine SEC warns against crypto schemes. Yet again, here, they're warning against various cryptocurrency investments, and it's the same style of investment. So they're seeing a maximum fine of um, P5 million or imprisonment of 21 years or both await those who act as salesmen, brokers, dealers, or agents of entities engaged in unauthorized investment schemes. The uh, Banyan Hio Hio as one act also, okay, so there are, what projects are they targeting? So they're targeting in Forsage, our catch online, the St. John and Jerusalem Knights of Malta Foundation of the Philippines Incorporated. Wow, that's a mouthful. Holy crap. But exactly, it's that strategy they deploy. These people, they choose a project. Sometimes they choose a, like a legitimate project. Sometimes they choose their own project and they'll just shill it like crazy to anyone who has money and who would give them money and they'll act as brokers, dealers. They would sell that as if it's almost like drugs on the street. So it is a problem with crypto, all right? This is a problem with crypto where the tech is hard to understand. People don't take all the time to understand it. And then they, oh, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and on that point as well, we got Valley Forces. I don't think Filecoin has bag holders, man. Man, you have no idea. In China, there are so many bag holders for Filecoin. It's, it, it got really pushed um, in China uh, very hard. Um, 
it's it's crazy. I, I want to find you the video. It's almost like a hey, hey, hey level uh, video where people just push that like mad. And uh, yeah, it's like huge conferences for Filecoin. You know, people flashing that Filecoin logo. Oh my God, Filecoin. And it's all mom and pops that were very into it. So now yet again, they, they have to push it super hard. So in the West, it's nothing. No one cares about Filecoin, right? But in China, it's big. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's, it's the weirdest, bizarrest things in this world. We've got Angela Wang sending a link. Let me see if that's the link that I'm trying to look for. Uh, let me throw that on screen. Let's see. Something went wrong. It says YouTube that YouTube don't like. Oh, no. YouTube. Oh, let me see if that works. Oh, this is what. This is it. This is it. I think you guys get the picture, but that was a promo there. You can see the FCC logo very prominently displayed. So that's the Filecoin logo, FCC. It's related to Filecoin. It was this, this Hong Kong guy. Like this is his, he's putting the Filecoin logo on his shirt as well. You can see IPFS on the background of the founders there, FCC guy. So that was how, the, that was the style it was being showed back in 2018. So this video was all about uh, <laughs> B Sao Ye. So this is a Hong Kong guy who showed it in Hong Kong. So. You can see the style of events. You can see the people who gather here. They're, they're not techies. They're people who are moms and pops with investment. They, they finally found this crypto thing. Someone's just telling them, oh, yo, Filecoin, buy it. And they're bag holders. So that's why there's a huge number of bag holders in China. And like this is a Hong Kong video. The Chinese videos would be different. They probably wouldn't be filmed like this. They probably wouldn't put this video public. Let's just say that because... Yet again, there were a few <laughs> understatement of the century, a few issues with doing that. So you don't you don't want to get caught doing that. So anyway, so this is this is what's happening right now. Um, it's just a way, uh, unfortunately, how a lot of crypto works. And, you know, they, they hire like yet again, you know, they hire Western faces here to just try to establish like international, not what not just Western, but like they hire international faces here to sit out front to establish legitimacy. Same thing. Um, and it's unfortunate because after all, Filecoin isn't a bad project. I actually took a look at it after people talked about it. It's not a bad project, but it's just the, the way sometimes it gets sold to various communities. It's, um, it's effective. These people can make a lot of money brokering or taking, um, yeah, taking little percentages on the side for purchases of these coins. So it's not, it can sometimes be a scam. It can sometimes be a legitimate project. Um, uh, but regardless, the, the method at which this is being pushed is definitely not cool. <laughs> uh, Nick Miles says, a Chinese version of hey, 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 really. And, and the funniest thing is, um, you know, for us, like the moment we see this, we get disgusted. We feel like, oh, yuck. Ugh, uh. You know, like uh, we're naturally disgusted by this, but Chinese people love it. It's so weird. It's so weird. Like, we can smile a scam from far away. You know, these guys will suddenly probably ask you for like 10, 20% on the side uh, in terms of fees, but nope. And they'll probably promise you anything. Like with these problems, like the problem with this is that they'll say everything to you. They'll say, oh, there's no risk. There's, uh, it's going to be perfect. This is going to change the world. <sighs> Anyways, but you know, I think it's all about moderation. So I think I'm glad we guys have, we got, I guess I'm glad we have a channel. We, like, I'm glad, glad we have this community. And we'll be there. So thank you, Angela, for posting that. Thank you. That was exactly the video I was looking for. Um, Anakin Ceases asks about VeChain. So VET, VET obviously is also moving up quite a lot. 
I think it's being rediscovered again, but who knows at this current point. It's been growing very, very quickly as well. So obviously that same applies, you know, be cautious, right? For me, obviously I'm ecstatic because I'm a holder from a long time ago. In fact, I held it when it was 0.3 cents, right? Actually, not. yeah, yeah. It's before when I was 0.3 cents, I was holding VeChain, you know, all the way down to dip. Everyone's calling it scam, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's ironically the best time to buy, right? Um, but yeah, like people are calling it a scam. It's over, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, it's the amount of stuff thrown at this. And then all of a sudden, obviously now at, at 1 cent 50, everyone's like, oh. Crazy, it's crazy. Um, so just be careful of that. I mean, I'll be, I, I'll be reasonable here and say, yo, look. Usually, when something moves up like that, just be very, very cautious about that. Um, you know, some people like to ride the wave. I'm the ones of the, I'm the holders that just like hodlers and just like, ugh, can't kill me. A hodl from 2017. <laughs> I'm not sure if you remember that meme. All right, guys. So. Let's move on. Let's move forward. Um, so just some quick things. We talked about the Philippine situation already. We have Vitalik. He's stating the obvious. We underestimated how long proof of stake and sharding would take to complete. Um, under That's like the major understatement of the century, eh? <laughs> Yep, we were talking about proof of stake on, um, on Ethereum since the channel first started and we still haven't seen it. So hopefully soon, hopefully soon. But this time I think they've, they've got something better. Fingers crossed. Um, I think there's a bunch of price posts right now. Um, I tend to ignore them, but I also tend to laugh at them. <laughs> so sometimes I just click into it. I'm like, oh my God, it's going to move. So we'll, we'll see, like, we'll be, we'll be thrown with articles on both sides, whether it's um, bear or bull. We're going to see articles of what reasons why it's the bull, why it's a bear. I think just take it with a grain of salt. You got it. Um, kind of funny also, um, Brock Pierce jumps into the 2020 presidential election. You know, he's the guy much, very much the face of EOS. Uh, also, Mighty Ducks guy too. He was in the Mighty Ducks movie. So anyways, Brock Pierce, he is announcing US 2020 presidential election. This world's going insane, but you know what? I, let me poll you guys here. So between Brock Pierce, president 2020 versus John McAfee, president 2020, who would you vote for? So if you only had these two options, Brock Pierce or John McAfee, who would you vote for? Say, uh, <laughs> throw that in on a comment section. I would love, love, love to hear that. I find it so crazy. But you know what? That's, that's the best part, right? Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> and do whatever you want. You know who I miss? I, I really miss the Yang gang. I, I really miss the Yang gang. Uh, that's, 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 that's something. That's something. <laughs> We got Ronnie Petit, he's like Kanye West, Kanye West for president. We got Trump 2020. Um, we got Trebolos as John. We also got two votes for John. We got Nick also for John. Ooh, John, John is, John is going ahead. John McAfee, guys. John McAfee. Average Joe also says John. I think John's beating Brock Pierce by a bunch. Cesar Augusto says John. <laughs> We got Bo Hansen says Fox Mining for president. Yeah. Average Joe John. All the way, John. I think John just won this hands down with the live chat at the very least. If you guys are watching this, also leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think. Brock Pierce versus John McAfee. I would love to hear that. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. John McAfee, of course, is John Mark Carter. Of course. Without, without a doubt. No doubt in his mind. Also, have you guys met the EOS guys in real life? It's crazy. Um, just Brock Pierce and his crew. It's, 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 a, it's a sight to behold at every conference. It's, it's crazy. Anyways. Uh, and then we got Nick Miles says, you can vote for anyone, but it's always a douche or a turd. <laughs> Hats off to you, Nick. 
John McAfee with updates. <laughs> but yeah, smart, uh, smarts killed wrestling. U.S. elections are fake. Put put votes on the blockchain. It could be real, but then we can know who everyone votes for. Well, unless it's some privacy thing involved. Eels is a little crazy. I mean, eels, man, they're setting on so much money. Like they're they're like there's a running joke in investor scene that EOS is a property agency now. They're buying so much property, they're a property fund. That's how much money they've got. They're just buying out property around the world. Do they want to develop? Eh, maybe sometimes. Maybe 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 they feel like you know with their mansions and their towers and their yachts. After maybe after a while, they'll they'll, they'll invest into some programming and make make EOS better. Ah, oh, that's scary. EOS, EOS is probably beating, what is it called again? WeWork now. I'm just souping up the property for cheap, smart people. Smart. All right, so that kind of concludes all that we want to talk about. At least on my agenda, we'll do some question and answers for this session. It's a crazy world. I'm just saying right now, like, this is total insanity. This week, I'll be very, very focused on um, pretty much on... Uh, the DeFi space, I think a lot needs to be actually covered there. So that'll be quite fun. Also, um, just to talk about this, um, let, let's hope this website works. I have a talk coming up on Unitize. So Unitize conference. So this is a blockchain conference. It's a combination of Block Show and San Francisco Blockchain Week. Uh, so it's these two guys combined together. Let's see, speakers. We're speaking today, actually. This is uh, Unitized Global Leaders. I have a talk that I just finished this weekend. It was it was crazy. It was just a crazy rush to get everything forward. Let me see if I... Oh, hey, we got Gavin Wood. Woo! Um, let me see where my speaker area is. Wow, that's a lot of people. Do I have myself in there? Did they put me there? Oh, hey, that's me. Oh, my God. Woo! All right, let's see the agenda. I'm always excited for this stuff. All right, so this is, I got a, actually a good session, um, a pretty good section actually. So let's just find my face, find my face. This guy, all right, it's at 7.30 a.m. That'll be 7.30 a.m. for me, I think. So I think they, they have the timing a little bit effect. So that'll be in less than 24 hours. Um, so this is on on, San, uh, on China's central bank digital currency, Decept. Um, it will be talking like we have Charles Yang, so the head trader. So you, you can kind of see this people I'm quite familiar with. Matthew Graham, sign of Global Capital. He's doing a lot. Of, he's in China. He actually sent the clip from China. But it's talking about Decept, the central bank digital currency issued by the Chinese government. It is actually going to come in play very soon. And it's also causing a lot of ripple effects. For example, right now with digital currency trading, they're trying to push everyone towards DCEP and closing accounts related to digital currency trading in China. So we discuss all these issues here. It's going to be huge because it's the first time the world's, the world's, the, the first nation in the world to deploy a digital currency um, that is fully digital. So in the past, we've, we've had, you know, digital, currencies built on top of traditional traditional systems. But with this time, it's actually a fully digital currency. You transfer, you use cryptography to transfer, you use aspects of blockchain. It's not blockchain itself. It's a highly modified version, but it takes a lot of concepts away from blockchain. And we're talking about a little bit about how potentially it could be good and bad for the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So that's one of the talks there. Um, I'll put the agenda online. I think it's pretty um, cool that it's happening in less than 24 hours. Um, and it'll be weird. I, I'm, I'll be interested to see like if, if one of these talks will, um, will be popular. I know like, you know, we can't really have, um, we can't really have a, Hey, there's another DCEP session. Awesome. That's cool. We can't really have real life meetups. So, I mean, normally speaking, we'll go to block show, we'll go to um, one of these things. I actually think like the quality of speakers is higher, 
But at the same time, being digital, I mean, a lot of people, when they go to conferences, don't listen to talks. They, they just go and socialize. And we really miss out on the socialize, socializing elements here if you do things online. So I'll be interested to see if you guys are interested in it. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool, uh, et cetera. All right, reading comments again. We got Pedro Max has smashed that like button. Guys, we got 200 people here. Let's make it to 100 likes. Come on, guys, smash up that like button. It really does help. And I want to give a big shout out as well for our donation. We had a $5 donation from WebNet Marketing. It says, thanks, five bucks. Thanks, awesome. Love that support. Sorry for the late shout out, uh, WebNet. <laughs> um, I didn't see it until now. I just noticed it. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for smashing out those likes. Mm. We got tech interesting. <sighs> we got Smarks killed wrestling. All queens are dead. Moved to BDC. It's hilarious. What about comp? Oh yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do an update on comp as well. So compound has been. It's kind of the trailblazer for um, a lot of the DeFi space after it got pushed onto Coinbase. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh my God, Comp. So Comp's been trying to establish price. I think the, the biggest risk for Comp, obviously, was the sell pressure. Comp being quite uh, funded from uh, a lot of big funds. Um, they're trying to establish a good price. And apparently, they're doing that pretty well. I'm actually quite surprised. I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, with their market cap at that crazy amount you know how can they can they sustain it well and it seems like they managed to bounce back from um let's just show the period i was following it for a while so they bounced back for 167 so they bounced back they're almost at 200 right now and i think this is one of the biggest risks right when you look at a coin you know they, they have a lot of legitimacy they have a lot of backing but the problem is the more backers or world-class investors that are, you know, A to Z Capital, Bain, Coinbase, Paradigm, Polychain, Dragonfly, Capital. These are the guys who are going to dump on our faces, right? And it depends on how they're, they're, they have to make an exit. These funds, their their stated objective is to make money. And I mean, for those of us who are smart enough to figure it out, the more you have to figure out what these coins that these funds bought at cost, you know, how much it costs. If they bought it at like say sixty dollars, you know, then you have an immense amount of sell pressure. Or if they bought it at thirty or ten, you know, this is where that deep breaches comes in. But a lot of times it's under NDA, so it's very very hard to figure out what happens. I made a video about dumpamentals as well, so it's like attributing pumpamentals and dumpamentals, which is where the two kind of factors you want to figure out um, that could affect the price in the short term. But anyways, um, Compound is actually doing surprisingly okay, I would say. Um, they actually changed how things move. So they have, they've already changed how BAT token, like say, for example, the yield for these coins, they're, they're drastically changed now. So back in the day, like you could almost get a 100% APY on BAT, and now they changed that. So they're, they're trying to very, very quickly establish new governance rules and take it somewhere, which is why I'm looking at it. But at the same time, I've also taken my BAT out. I had some BAT, B-A-T, that I was depositing on there for the 100% APY. And I took that out because I thought, you know what? Yeah, with the new rates, it's not, not as good as before. Um, how about Kava, similar to Cop Maker ETC? So another DeFi project with 4 million cap. I will take a look. So um, the DeFi series is moving along. Like just last week, um, I was a little bit too busy with these conference videos which is why the DeFi series isn't as kind of updated as I want it to be. So with the DeFi series, what I added was I started off with the compound. Then we also have liquidity pools explained, and then we have MetaMask. So we'll move on to Balancer, Kava, um, all your requests. We'll just keep doing and keep figuring out what's happening in DeFi space. It's not about shilling DeFi per se. It's more about figuring out, you know, what, what's going on and just having a good kind of, uh, reference for what's happening. And in many cases, even though maybe the the thumbnail can look very positive, um, I've always been 
you know, level-headed with all these approaches. And something that I do want to um, call attention to is this video here. If you guys use MetaMask a lot, um, the tips and tricks I've, I made was just to help you guys um, make it better. I'm not supporting MetaMask. If people ask me, do I like MetaMask? I don't really like it. But at the same time, I use it because it's one of the best tools uh, or only tools to interact with a lot of these smart contracts right now. And you can use it in conjunction with the ledger, etc. So you can still keep your cryptocurrency safe in that end. So um, I have a ledger tips and tricks about accelerating transactions, saving up on costs, just ma min maxing what you can do. So if you encounter transactions that can cost like $11 for a transaction that does happen, um, that can potentially help you a lot there. Bali Poor says, shock that the sole goal of an investor is to make money. <gasps> ah, it's all about the exit, guys. It's all about the exit. Bali Poor says, how do you think companies get funded? And it's always about, so it's not just about, um, like it's, it, it depends on how you look at it, right? I mean, previously, it depends on how much discount the initial seed investors get. So, it's all about that ratio. If they had like say a uh, hundred, like a 50% discount on coins or maybe a 75% discount on coins, those will ring alarm bells. So it's always about, so I, I totally agree with you. It's not about, um, I'm not trying to attack funding. Funding is gonna happen, right? No matter what, good projects are gonna look for good investors to invest in the project, inject capital in, and then have money. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that that method is bad, but what you have to be aware of, obviously, is the amount of discounts they have and what lockups they have. So that's probably kind of key here. And it's really hard to figure out sometimes. It's really, really hard to figure out that. Like, um, So this is the dump of mentos video I was talking about. So this was about, you know, all the factors that attribute to dump. So I actually find it's actually a lot more uh, more important if you find out, you know, what's, what's happening in that respect. Oh, I, I just remembered I have this. So guys, if you want to tune into live, let me, let me just play this again. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you want to tune into live, we have live videos every week. There's two videos every week, one on Monday, 11 a.m. Hong Kong time or Friday, 11 a.m. Hong Kong time. But if you're in the Eastern time, I'll just put the Eastern time out there. It's 11 p.m. the earlier day. So I'm trying these like little things to add to this video. And we also have the podcast. Check out the podcast. Okay, so on this direction, check out the podcast over here. The new podcast is available. Um, it's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It's on pretty much everything. We talk a lot about like in detail, crypto in detail. And it's really the way to get educated in this space. So been, yeah working quite hard on that. And this week, especially, we're working a lot harder on getting more podcasts and ideas up on that. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do these little things. I, I, I kind of find them kind of cool, but anyways, um, just figuring out how to use my stream deck and my stream gear. Uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna wrap this session up. Let's see if there's any other dying questions from everyone. Bali Poor says, don't buy a token unless you're getting equity. It's kind of funny how that changed as well in investment space. Like before they, they don't want equity. They just want tokens. And a lot of times equity will yield tokens. And then there was a period where no one wants tokens anymore. Cause like ICO investing just kind of died and they're like, oh, we just want equity. And now we're kind of back to both again. It's kind of hilarious. Across Canada says, we got a question. Is it time to buy Bitcoin for me? All right, I can't give financial advice here, but for me, I am dollar cost averaging into it. Why is month market dropping? Is it time to buy Bitcoin? Dollar cost average is my, my strategy for that. Kevin Chan says, long time follower up. Do you make educational videos on new projects still? Yep, so we're doing a lot on DeFi series. So just personally, out of my personal interest, we're doing a lot into DeFi. I've been looking at Balancer, it's like crazy. I looked at Curve, um, like it's a balance, right? Sometimes if you do a video on a new project, people are like, oh, you are such a shill. You're such a loser. Uh, stop shilling stuff. But sometimes you just wanna learn about it, right? I mean, that's the whole purpose of this channel. So. This year, I've been less, like, I've been less, I don't, I've been less 
bothered by that. I think there's so many communities that, and so many different voices here. And I think providing a good education path is the way for it. Um, but you know, some people can take it as shell, but I never say buy anything. I've always said, just be smart, learn. And that's the way I like it. Like that's the way I feel like should be done. Like we're, we're not giving financial advice at all, but in fact, talking to people about a coin makes them smarter. They, people need to have the ability to make their own decision. And a lot of people will tell me, you know what, like, you know, they, they don't spend the time to look at crypto. They don't have all the time necessary and they just want to follow signals. And that always makes me sad because it's just the number one way to get scammed. If you follow signals, if you, if all you do is go to one conference from, you know, and that shows FCC, it's not, it's not going to be the best way forward. The best way forward is to be knowledgeable enough to at least have a general understanding about what's going on, the strengths and the weaknesses. That's part of your research and it's hard to obtain. Like learning is hard, but for me, it was always worth it. Cryptomorphia says at box mining, like CZ said, people are really slapping themselves for selling under 10K. Dude, you know why I'm in crypto? Like um, my first time I got scammed in crypto, not scam, but when I actually followed mainstream media advice on crypto was when I sold Bitcoin at $15, like $15. It's fr freaking stupid, right? Like I want to go back in time and slap myself like if I can. So 2012, I was mining Bitcoin. I was $10. There was so much FUD out there. Like you essentially, it's a, to a point where you actually believe people are like Peter Schiff, right? Because Bitcoin is so new. Peter comes out and, yo, Bitcoin, it's, it's a scam. It's going to go to zero. You know, you're lucky if you sell at $15. And in many ways, this is why this channel was made. And the community helped a lot. We understood the, the use of Bitcoin and why it's never going to go away. Like the people who say Bitcoin is going to go to zero, they're so delusional. They are so, they they do not understand at all what is behind this. It's like it's the equivalent of people saying, "Yo, cars, right? Horses are great. Why cars? That's so dangerous." Right? Horses are real. Or why electricity? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I mean, if you watch these documentaries about Thomas Edison and JP Morgan, um, yeah, JP Morgan's dad was like, you know what? Yeah, this electricity thing, thing, what are you doing? What are you wasting your time on? It sucks. We got, we got, we got oil. Get a, get a real life. You know, this is just insane. It's, we're, we're at the point where Bitcoin as an asset, there's two, two fundamental reasons why I feel like Bitcoin will never go away. One is because we need a way to send value around the world that is not political, right? So right now you see politics flaring up and we're going to see financial controls being applied everywhere, trying to limit how we even spend our money. Whilst this not, may not be very present in the West, it is very, very clear and present in Asia, in China, in South Korea, in Philippines, in Thailand, there's strong restrictions of what you can do with your money and how you can send it overseas. So there's no other way to do it other than with Bitcoin. All right. So that's a unique aspect right there. There's also not seizable. So crypto immune to politics, if you hold it, it's yours. And this is extremely important in countries like China as well. Lastly, we have money being printed endlessly by the US government. Do we really think that's sustainable? It's also going on like quantitative easing. I mean, we even have a fancy word for it. So that's why I feel like it's there's no way to replace Bitcoin. It's got these unique properties. Anyone who is saying it's going to go to zero is clearly the delusional. Um, just just like, like, did you knock your head? I know. Anyways, I'm not going to insult that, but um, I'm still angry at myself for selling at 15. And in, in many cases, there are so many risks with Bitcoin and crypto too, right? So, you know, I'm saying all the best things about Bitcoin, but at the same time, obviously the market is still very small. It's still very niche. The fluctuations, I mean, Bitcoin can go or 
very quickly. And that's most likely because of very big buyers and sellers who can potentially manipulate the market. So you have this huge risk here. And this is why I personally dollar cost average, but I'm not telling you guys to do the same. You guys figure out your way. For, for me, dollar cost average is, average is out all this manipulation that can go on. So you're not really as affected by it. So that's my two cents, guys. Um, hope that answers your question. We got Brian Paul says, don't talk about China, they are monitoring. So I've been a, a lot more aware, especially because I'm in Hong Kong right now about what I say, but do, yeah, do remind me if I say something too much. Um, I think talking about financial, like keeping your finances, that's not illegal. At least, at least for now, I think. Um, all right, we have a comment about Kevin Chan. How is India Supreme uh, upholding the BTC effect and the future of Bitcoin or DeFi projects? What other types of projects do you see? So India has been very interesting recently. Um, just on an off topic, um, they banned a lot of Chinese apps recently, right? So this has made the news a lot. I didn't really talk about it, but I feel like it's it's very both political and very interesting. Um, Okay, two things. Okay, just just answer your question first, and then jump into the side topic. So Kevin, um, he asked a question about the Supreme Court upholding and the legality. So I don't think legality is going to be a big factor in terms of governing crypto. We saw China ban crypto, but at the same time, peer to peer purchases, and China's still a very big scene there. So it's like. It really depends, I would say. Uh, maybe it's like, it depends on how they, they enforce it. But th at the end of the day, what the power of a crypto is that you can sell it peer to peer. So you can sell it, you know, just on the street, etc. Not really what I would recommend doing at this current point, but at the same time, that's what makes it censorship resistant because there are no points of, um, you can do it peer to peer. You don't have to do it through an exchange. So there's no centralized points of failure, etc. So that's one of it. Um, okay, so back into this as well. So India bans Chinese apps. So very, very political right now. Obviously, politics is up crazy, but TikTok has been banned. WeChat has also been banned. And a lot of this is to prevent kind of subversion almost in the Indian market. And I think this is very interesting to talk about because two things. Obviously, the politics is crazy. I'm not going to go in politics there. It's not a politics channel. But the second thing is Chinese apps collecting data has been a big problem. Does it happen? Yes or no? I absolutely under uh, one of the uh, not just I don't I believe it's been proven that TikTok collects clipboard information. So um, with the new iOS update, people can see when the clipboard is being accessed by an app, and TikTok constantly accesses your clipboard for some reason. So just to see what you're copy pasting. Could they copy paste your cryptocurrency addresses? Yes, they can probably scan and figure out who you're sending crypto to. That's scary. So there could be potential issues with this. And I do know for a fact that Chinese developed apps for some reason stay in memory for a long time, especially on Android. And this is why in many cases, I try not to install Chinese apps on my phone. Um, it's just that regulation there is not very strong and data collecting is very present. I told you guys when I was in the gaming space, in the Chinese gaming space, we knew from CTOs that there were special builds of apps that would intentionally collect user data for their own purposes. Not nefarious purposes, but they would intentionally abuse a few of particular apps just to collect data on users. So just be very careful, guys. Um, there is definitely a political undertoning as well to this where, you know, India might do something very similar to China to ban all Chinese apps so their local apps can develop, get developed as well. So that could be a potential strategy. We saw that with China. So they banned Facebook so they can have their own Weibo platform. They banned Twitter. So yet again, there's two Weibos, one by Tencent and one by Sina. And then they also banned um, WhatsApp and they made Telegram really hard to use. And that's what led to the, to the um, development of WeChat. So in many cases, it could be a political move as well, but at the same time, there's definitely something happening there too to trigger this. I got looking at Quant, do a video on Quant Baby. All right, I'll take a look. We'll do more videos this week. So this video is all about, you know, DeFi space and everything here. So brace yourself, brace yourself. Grab uh, Brian Paul says, stop talking about China, please. Oh, well. all right. 
Anyways, um, I think we're going to end this talk about China too. I think it's a good time to end before it gets too political. But with that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me just play some of this stuff again. This is really cool. I'm just testing this out. So yes, live streams. Next live stream. Okay, coming up here. It's going to be on Friday, 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m.? 11 a.m. Hong Kong time or 11 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. I'll put the link up now. So let me let me find my link for that and let me put it up for you guys. So you guys can click on that remind me button. It really does help, apparently. Uh, not apparently, it does. Uh, let me see, go live, stream. And it really does help. Cause so if you click on it, it gives you the right time for, for the live streams, uh, when it's gonna happen. And uh, let me just kind of let me see what else happened here. Let me copy paste, copy this. Then let me put this up. I'm finally getting better. So, okay, so that, if you click it, if you click it without the studio attachment to it, I have no idea why it's like this, but let me see. All right, here we go. So this is the next one live in three days. If you set a reminder for it, it will tell you when I go live. So you won't miss up the entire episode. We're also going to do a giveaway next episode. So I found this ledger, um, this ledger nano S I bought this like a year ago and I bought this because I just gave it to random friends. So now friends on this channel, ledger next giveaway next episode so make sure you're reminded make sure you're there so click that reminder on button and then you're good to go click that reminder on button smash up the likes if you can if it does really help so reminder on smash up the likes someone to click a dislike to be a douche but that's great <laughs> we got to beat them to it so guys come on at least 10 of you smash up likes on this one so it does really help i'll put the link here um uh, and uh Let's see. Come on, guys. Oh, where is my link? Oh, no. All right. Restore chat. All right. Boom. We are here. And we also got questions of what's up with VeChain. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll actually get you guys an update on VeChain as well. I promised this with Cardano as well, the two projects I was talking about. It's been so busy that I can't make these videos. But anyways, I, sh I definitely want to give you guys an update about what's happening with VeChain, with Cardano. Um, hope we get some interviews as well with both these project leaders to find out what's happening that's pending. Um, so much to do, it's crazy. Uh, and let me see that. Uh, so we got this here and we have the podcast as well. Let me show you guys the podcast. So podcast. Uh, that's coming up. Let me see. Bitcoin. In, in fact, if you search Bitcoin out of the box, which is what I'm naming the podcast, uh, let me, let me, sh let me flash that here. Oh, podcast. Okay. That's that doesn't work. That doesn't work anymore. Okay. So podcast Bitcoin out of the box It's on Apple podcast. I'll send the Apple link here. Um, we can get that. Boom. All right. All right, guys, we also have a hundred likes. So big thank you to everyone who clicked the likes on this video and everything there. Let me just disable that. Oh, it has to be here. Got it. I'm just figuring out how to use all this fun stuff. Um, getting more attuned to using OBS and the platform. So guys, thank you so much for uh, watching. We also got a good question from Cryptomorpheus. Do you like photography? Uh, do you like Sony or Nikon? So I use Sony right now because for video, they're very, very on top of the game, especially right now, the one, the camera that I'm using, the a7 III, that is like, that has been my like core for quite some time. But Nikon this year has been doing very well. So if you're new, oh man, that's a hard choice. That is a hard choice to make. And uh, we'll have to see with, Depends on if you like photography or videography. I'm personally, I'm kind of stuck in the Sony ecosystem. Once you start buying a few lenses, you're really stuck. So right now I'm using a, I think it's a 24 to 70 um, G master lens. And that thing costs like a thousand five hundred. So like once you buy that, you're like, okay, I'm stuck to this ecosystem. I'm not going to move because uh, any sort of operation involving that like 
any change will mean you invalidate that lens, right? So you're like, oh man, I just wasted that money. So yeah, that's the case. If you guys are interested in tech stuff and some of my opinions, Fox Tech has also been there. Um, we have this Fox Tech. So I've been making a lot of videos too. That's been taking a lot of my time, but these are much faster videos. I, I talk about what's, be we have a behind the scenes studio tour of what's going on here. That's done with horrible lighting. Uh, but I show you guys what's happening. You can also see on the other side, my screens, you can see like, Ooh, oh, actually, I actually need, actually need to show you guys this, but I actually have a four screen setup now. Finally, I am super excited, super happy. Um, it's so, something I always wanted this four screen setup. And I got these two screens down here for super cheap, but I talked to you guys about that in the studio tour, which is on my other channel. So it's just like, it's just for fun. You can see how messy my place is right now still, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Nick, Nick and across Canada, uh, really hate Canon. Really? Really? I I've been like, I mean, watching a lot of videos. Um, I watch Potato Jet a lot. So this is just totally off topic. And he's a big Canon fan. So like Canon colors look great. Uh, no joke. And in fact, I got this new camera here, right? So you can see this is pretty much a prop right now, but I'm going to make it soon. I'm going to, I'm going to make this camera work for me soon. But I was thinking to get an email, which is the Canon email for this lens. So anyways, that's something. This is very divisive. Lens choices and cameras are like choosing between coins. It's, um, it's like choosing between PlayStation and Xbox. It's very polarized both directions. Yep. Uh, all right, there. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for um, this video. Cryptomorphosis. I like the sharpness and color of Nikon. In fact, if you guys want a Nikon footage, the footages shot with Charles are always on a Nikon. So that's on a Z6. So if you guys like videos like that, let me see if I can find any videos there. So anything that we shot with Charles, like they have a Z6 at Genesis block. So we shot those. So let me see that this video. So this video is shot on the uh, Nikon and you can see like once, even if you zoom in, like zoom in, this is a, this is just shot on the same frame, right? So this is the frame and then you can zoom in on the frame and it looks super sharp still. So let me see that. Let me see zooming in. Uh, this is me zoomed in and it seems sharp. It's like, it looks super, super sharp. So if you guys like a reference for that, that was on a prime that was shot on a 50 mil 50 millimeter Nikon prime lens on the Nikon Z six. And it looks good. It actually doesn't look bad. So yeah. We got Rodney Petit says, I'm a Canon guy. I have the 5D Mark series, mirrorless. Yeah, that's the way it is, man. That's the, that's the way cameras go. I, I'm so, I'm pretty cool. It's pretty cool how we have so many people interested in cameras here. It's such an expensive hobby though. It's like, it's, it's super expensive. Like everything just gets up to ridiculous prices in the end. And you know, the biggest winners are the cam cam camera manufacturers. That's the way it's the best and the worst, but Anyways, guys, 16 to 35. Uh, Soup says, I used the 7 A7 III R2. I use A7 R2 with Nikon lens. That's cool. My dad's very big into Nikon. Like he's got like a lot of older Nikon lenses that perform amazing apparently. Um, and he got the Leica mounts on it. So yeah, it's like everyone's different, right? Like, and especially because I think cameras are just talking about cameras. They breed that loyalty by giving you, getting you stuck on the lenses. Like I wish there was a case where all these lenses would be the same mount, but because every com com um, camera company has their own unique system. So once you buy lenses, you're stuck to that camera brand pretty much. So it's like, that's how they breed loyalty. Right. And, um, yeah, it's led to us to us, to, to a state, but anyways, guys, Thank you guys so much for watching. You're streaming at like 6, 10 FPS right now. Yeah, I don't know why. I really don't know why. It's like drop frames detected. Um, that is so weird. Let me check the background. I'm, I'm just going to try to figure out this problem. But it shouldn't be dropping. I mean, it's like, anyways, guys, I it feels like I'm streaming at 10 FPS. I hope it's not. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching today. Find you guys later. Find you guys later. Yeah, my CPU is like barely an anything. I have 2% CPU usage. Mm, not very stable. 
Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'll find you guys in the